Sure. Thanks a lot. Uh, Matthew Lee, uh, Inner City Press, on behalf of the Free UN Coalition for Access, thanks a lot for this timely briefing. I, I saw a, 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 an interview you did with ITV uh, uh, Television, where at least at one point you, it was unclear to your organization where 28 people who had been rescued were taken. So I wanted to know the specifics. What are the rights of people? I mean, either the, both what are their rights and what are, what are, what's your process for getting, gaining access to people that are rescued? And also, what is the, 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 very specifically the status of trying to improve search and rescue operations by, by either European ships or other ships? How much funds would it require? Would it require a decision at the, in Brussels? Are countries able to do it on their own? What would you like countries to do you know, beginning today so that people don't die, die at sea? Um, about the last question, uh, I think that facts and figures are talking by themselves. This is, uh, uh, Triton uh, is not like uh, Mare Nostrum, it's very clear. And uh, Mare Nostrum uh, saved, uh, and even uh, the number of deaths uh, uh, is increased 51% after the, the closure of, uh, of uh, uh, Mare Nostrum. So this is the, the evidence that Mare Nostrum uh, saved life, and it costed uh, uh, 9 million uh, per month. So I, I, I wonder why the now EU is spending nine million per month uh, after the last uh, EU uh, meeting uh, immediately after the tragedy. But then again, all the operation uh, uh, was led by the Italian Navy and the Italian uh, Coast Guard. And this is uh, a fact. About uh, the, 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 the 28, uh, uh, if you mean uh, the process, uh, uh, of course, they will uh, meet the, the, the commission and they, they will be interviewed by the, the, the commission to verify if there are conditions to receive the humanitarian protection or not. And uh, this is all the migrants that arrive uh, on our uh, docks uh, pass through this uh, process. Uh, I met them I, I, immediately after that very night when they arrived and I have the opportunity to, to talk with a few of them. And what is in my, my mind, but not only in my mind, in my heart, uh, this was the words coming from one of them, and I repeated this word today to the UN Secretary General about uh, the priority to solve the, the, the Libyan crisis. He said to me, once that you enter in Libya, even if you change mind, you cannot go back to your country. You are not anymore free. You are pushed to, with the guns uh, to go on the boat. Uh, and uh, and uh, he told me several times, repeating, of course, he was under shock, but he repeated, you cannot imagine how hard is the situation uh, in, uh, in Libya. Uh, so the process uh, is always the same, uh, but the, 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 the fact uh, is that uh, the majority of, the, of these people uh, don't want to, to stay in Italy. They do, they do want to, to reach their own families, uh, uh, their, their relatives uh, in, uh, in Europe. So this is a Europe issue. It's not only an Italian issue. This is, uh, must be very clear. And this is the reason why then uh, at the end, uh, uh, when you, you verify the figures, uh, most of comparing uh, the number of the people processed uh, that go under interviews, and the number that arrived uh, on the docks uh, uh, is uh, completely different because most of them, they escape and they go in Europe without any interviews and they become illegal, most of them. So without a, a European solution, we are creating other people that is going to live at the borders of our society. This is a, this is a fact. This is, a, is the reason, another reason why it must be a, a, a EU issue that cannot be solved only at the Italian border or the Greek border or at the Spanish uh, border. 